Well, good morning again and welcome back to The Quiet Place, the place where we can draw close just as Jesus did to meet with our Heavenly Father to be uh, refreshed, encouraged and commissioned for our day today. I hope The Quiet Place is a place where you've learned to come to be refreshed as an authentic follower, courage to love Horsham or your local community and commission to advance the kingdom. So you are really welcome if you're coming back for the dozenth time or whether this is your first time, whether you're on Facebook, YouTube or connecting via the Lifespring podcast, you are all so very, very welcome. And today we're in chapter 12 and... Uh, There may be too much to get into for a 10 minute devotion, but I think there's a few things we can pull out and think about this morning. What struck me was the frequency in this chapter of words like everyone, most and many. John 12 verse 19 says, Then the Pharisees said to each other, There's nothing we can do. Look, everyone has gone after him. And then again in verse 37, but despite all the miraculous signs Jesus had done, most of the people did still not believe in him. And verse 42, many people did believe in him, however, including some of the Jewish leaders, but they wouldn't admit it for fear that the Pharisees would expel them from the synagogue. It can be really confusing sometimes when we read words like everyone, most and many, as they can all mean something different to us. And in English, our language isn't that rich. You know, does does everyone mean most or does it mean everyone? Everyone's gone after him. Does that mean everyone without exception? It can't do because verse 42, it says many people did believe, but they wouldn't admit it. So as far as the Pharisees were concerned, they didn't believe. And so they weren't going after Jesus. So it, it couldn't mean without exception. So the everyone in verse 19 must have been a generalisation. It it seemed like everyone had gone after him. Maybe it's like when our kids tell us that they need an iPhone because everyone at school has one. Um, It's a movable feast, isn't it? Everyone went after him and that dwindled to most believed, but some fell away, resulting in many following, but some went back. Reminds me a little bit of the parable of the sower. The seed that springs up quickly is like everyone went after him. In this passage, some fell on hard ground. Most believe, but not all. Some falls on good soil. Many uh, have let the seed germinate. Weeds choke the seed in the good soil. Those people that wouldn't admit it for fear that we've just read about. I wondered if you saw the echoes of that parable in these words. Now, uh, a few people have commented on uh, giving me feedback, really, on this, saying, I just don't see all the things that that you see. And it's been really helpful. And I, I hope this is helpful. But, you know, the whole point of these devotions is so that you're excited to study the word of God more deeply, not for me to do it for you. So hopefully you can go back maybe and have a look at that. I love Jesus' simple wisdom uh, amongst the verses of this chapter. Verse 26, anyone who wants to serve me must follow me because my servants must be where I am and the Father will honour everyone or anyone who serves me. This is the very definition of an authentic follower, one of our values, the one who follows and lives in the presence of Jesus. You must follow me and be where I am. That's what Jesus said. We know that Jesus stresses too that we must say what the Father says and we see that Jesus didn't shy away from difficult aspects of the gospel. However, it's Jesus' emphasis on keeping the main thing the main thing that we should remember from this chapter. Verses 46 to 50, Jesus says this, I have come as a light to shine in the dark world so that all who put their trust in me will no longer remain in the dark. I will not judge those who hear me, but don't obey me, for I've come to save the world, not to judge it. But all who reject me and my message will be judged on the day of judgment by the truth that I've spoken. I don't speak on my own authority. The Father who sent me has commanded me what to say and how to say it. And I know his commands lead to eternal life. So I say whatever the Father tells me to say. 
Again and again, Jesus stresses, uh, as he does in John 3, 16 and 17, that he has not come to judge, but to save. He's not motivated by judgment, but love. Yes, there is judgment, but that's not the motivation and not Jesus' focus. Why is it then that everyone, many or most people, believe the church to be so judgmental? I remember hearing the anecdote of a street pastor working with prostitutes uh, and finding one sitting in the gutter late one night uh, crying. He listened to her story and he said to her at the end, have you ever thought about going to the church? And she replied, why would I want to feel worse about myself than I already do? Jesus did not deny that there was judgment, but it wasn't the motivation of his heart. The evidence was that he was motivated by love. His message was a message of hope, not fear. The gospel was not a message of fear and judgment, so you better say yes. It was good news for those who say yes. And that was the message. It was good news. And it's not just what we say, but how we say it. Jesus was clear about that. He said, I not only say what the Father says, but he shows me and tells me how to say it. Jesus was clear about the judgment to come, but his stress was on love, on hope and salvation. He is the saviour, the rescuer, the lover of my soul, not the grim reaper coming to scare us into one camp or the other. To use a common phrase, the gospel is a carrot, not a stick. It's good news so that all who call on the name of the Lord will be saved, be that everyone, most or many. Amen. Wonderful. Well, let's pray for ourselves. I'll pray for you now uh, and then we'll crack on with our day. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are motivated by love. Thank you, Jesus, that it was for love that you came and that you died on the cross because of your great love for us. And I pray, Lord, that today and every day we would be a people passionate about you, Lord Jesus, authentic followers like you were who only say what we hear you saying, but we, we only say it in the way that you say it. We want that to help us to be motivated by love and hope, not judgment and fear. I pray help us today. Help us as we speak to people to model your example to them. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. Wonderful. Well, thanks for joining me again. Until next time, don't forget to tell someone about Jesus. See you soon. Bye now.